Hello again, everyone, and yes, we are here, and I'm Jack Curry, and today I'm joined by a familiar face to anyone who is a New York baseball fan or a Major League Baseball fan at that, Robin Ventura, spent 16 years in the Major Leagues. He played with the Mets and the Yankees. He has that rare distinction. He played 10 years with the White Sox, and Robin, first of all, thank you for joining us. Second of all, and much more importantly, how is everything going with your family during this pandemic? Uh, we're fine. You know, I think everybody's just laying low and trying to ride this out. I mean, it, it's obviously very uh, surreal and, and, and all that, but every, everybody's doing fine. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. And I love this aspect of your story, even though the pandemic has short circuited it for now. You are a legend at Oklahoma State, hold a bunch of school records, had a 58 game hitting streak at Oklahoma State. You decided to go back to school to complete your degree, which is phenomenal. That is a great role model right there. You also were going to be a student assistant coach. So before everything stalled and the season was canceled, how was that going for you? It was going great. It was going, I mean, it's, it's really fun. I think the kids are fun. Uh, I, I'm at a place that I really enjoy and, and the people that I'm working with are all people that I've known for years. So it was just a fun group to be a part of as far as the coaching staff and everything. And, and I was getting A's, Jack, too. I just want you to know I'm, I still finished my school. It is online, but uh, I, I do have A's. So I, I'm bringing up the, uh, the team GPA. I, I need to know a class or two. What courses? Give, give me an idea of what uh, Robin well, I have a microbiology did. class. I have a diversity class, uh, a couple of independent study ones. But, um, yeah, the micro microbiology class is, is really interesting. I think that's fun. It also happens to uh, show how to how to make beer, how to brew your own beer at home. So it, it's, it's, it's pretty important. I'm going online as soon as we're done. I'm signing up for that for next semester. What compelled you, Robin, to want to do this? You've accomplished a ton in your life. You could have been very content, a very happy guy, and said, eh, I got as far as I wanted to get in college and still did pretty well in my career. What was the motivation to want to go back and finish up? Well, I do I do enjoy coaching, and I'd come back for a couple football games and, and run into Josh uh, Holiday. And uh, he was just explaining, Matt just came on as an assistant. And, uh, you know, I've known both of them since they were probably 10 years old. So, um, you know, very familiar group. The, the pitching coach, Rob Walton, who I played with at Oklahoma State. And, you know, we just kept talking every time I'd come back to a game. And, you know, some of it was about, what are you doing? I said, I don't know, you know, nothing right now. And it, it just kind of was an idea floated out there and I just kept thinking about it and, and thinking, you know, this would actually be really fun. And then we came down to that. I would have to be a student coach. So I'd have to go back to school. And I, you know, you know, the more I thought about it, I said, you know what, it sounds like a lot of fun. I, I, it, it is really um, interesting being on a campus and just being around younger kids and everything. It, it's been a real uh, a fun time. I mean, it, it really has. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that you're the first former major league manager who ever returned as a student assistant college coach. I'm sure there probably is somebody who helped out at the college level. So I think that says a lot about you and your willingness to just want to help kids and help make them better baseball players. I know how humble a guy you are, Robin, from having covered you, but I want to throw a couple of numbers out here. 16 year career, you hit almost 300 home runs. You had an OPS of over 800, six gold gloves, almost 2,000 hits, a couple of all-star appearances. What are you most proud of from your career? I, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I just think I, I, you know, hope the guys I played with, you know, say I was a good teammate. You know, I think, you know, that that's always important. But, um, you know, hopefully they, they felt like me being on the team made us a better team. I mean, I, I – People are going to make their own decisions about, you know, anything that happened in your career, but it's, it's always about what the people that you played with. In December of 2001, you were involved in a, a rare transaction, a, a Mets Yankees trade. The Mets traded you to the Yankees for David justice. He never ended up playing with the Mets. He then got flipped to the Oakland days, but you had accomplished a lot with the Mets. You had played against the Yankees in the 2000 world series. And, and we're going to get to that, but, when you got the news that you were being traded to the Yankees, I remember you being heartened by that. I remember you saying, 
I feel I've got something left in the tank here. Yeah, I think at, at that time, uh, I know the year before was I had a rough one. Um, and, and, you know, you just you sit there and kind of see where you're at and, and where you're going. I, I, you know, when Steve called me and said I got traded, you know, I'm you know, your mind immediately goes to, OK, I got to pick everything up and, and go somewhere else. And basically, I was just traded 20 minutes closer to my house. So it was, uh, you know, it was kind of a weird at, at first. You're like, wait a minute, I'm traded. But I don't really have to go anywhere. So, uh, you know, I was pretty fortunate that I, I ended up there. It was, you know, obviously a great team, but um, it was just nice that, it, you know, you weren't totally upended, like you're not going all the way across the country. And you made an all star team with the Yankees in 2002, one of your two all star appearances in your career. Talk to a lot of Yankees about the 2000 World Series and just the whole city just being mesmerized by New York versus New York. Al Leiter has said that if the Mets win game one, which if not for a base running gaffe by Timo Perez, maybe you do. Al Leiter thinks you win that World Series. The Yankees ended up winning in five games. What's your take on that if game one had tilted in the other direction? You know, it's anything's possible. I think, you know, it obviously would have given us a lot more momentum uh, going into the next day. And we, we were kind of streaky that way. Um, of, in series of getting that first one and, and being able to go on from there. But um, I don't know. I mean, you know, it, it would have definitely been a difference maker for us. I don't know if it, we would have won it or not, but um, it definitely would have changed some things in the next couple of games. That was a five game series, but to me, it felt so much closer because their first three wins in that series, all one run games. And then even the final game, it ends with uh, Piazza almost yeah. hit the game tying home run as you reflect on that series and, and the experience of it. I know it stinks to lose, but, but what do you take away from going up against the Yankees that year? Well, I, I think just the atmosphere because it was a, a subway series that just made it so different than any other series they had. You're never traveling. Um, you know, you, you show up at your stadium and bus over. So it was just a, uh, you know, kind of a, a different kind of series. And I think everywhere you were in town, you know, somebody's taken a side. It wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't like you just had your own fans, but you had the other side telling you weren't going to do it. So it was, uh, I think that's what made it really unique. We go a year later, Robin, and unfortunately with everything that our country and our world is enduring right now, there have been comparisons made between what is going on in 2020 and what we all had to endure with 9-11. I remember you being amongst the players who were, were very out front and being very supportive of everyone who had lost so much after 9-11. What do you remember about that time, and what do you remember about how baseball coming back, and you played in the first game in New York 11 days later, maybe allowed people a little bit of a respite for, from all of the, the grief that they were dealing with? Yeah, I'd say it has a, I mean, the beginnings of this, what we're going through right now was, was similar to that feeling that we had, um, you know, those first few days, because you're at home, you're not doing anything, you're just trying to watch the news, get as much information as you can, but, um, it, you know, it, it had a similar feel of just, you don't really know what to do, and, um, you know, especially for us, they were using Shea as a, a kind of a hub for all the materials and support stuff that were, were coming in from across the country and so we're we're getting a pretty good dose of it when you go to the stadium and and you got firefighters sleeping in locker rooms and uh, it, it was just a, a a trying time I mean it was, it was sad definitely but you know you see these people that are that are trying to help and and recovery and then once we started playing again um you just felt like people needed something. And, and I think that Homer that Mike hit is, you know, goes down really as one of the um, kind of the touching moments really for, for baseball at that time. I remember covering that game, being at that game as a two run Homer off Atlanta's Steve Carse, And you just sort of had the feeling that this had been scripted or this had been destined. I remember Bobby Valentine calling it a small miracle after the game. And I don't know about you, but I thought that that captured perfectly that New York needed that jolt that night, even if it was only for a few hours. 
Yeah, really. I mean, especially because it was the Braves. We haven't played well against the Braves. They seem to have our number. And and to come back that night, an important night, uh, you know, and I think everybody was still nervous, a little scared of what was going on. And if you could gather and, and have a game and, um, you know, it was it was just emotional. I think every game we played from there on out was pretty emotional with the people that were there. But I think with Mike doing that, it was it was really important, I think, for everybody just to kind of let loose and, and to be able to cheer and, and scream. It just all came out at once. Robin, you managed the White Sox for five years. Your first year there, you win 85 games. You actually come within three games of a playoff spot. The Tigers beat you out. They finished first. Never climbed over 500 in the next four years. What went right in the first year? What didn't go as right in those subsequent years? Well, I think, you know, when I first got there, we were kind of an older team. And, um, you know, I don't know if they they overachieved, but they they played well. I mean, it was a, a team that was, you know, you had older guys that performed and played better. And it, it just seemed to work with that group. And um, I, I think in the in the subsequent years, we we probably weren't as strong as um, that that team was, but. You know, I, I think every year is a little bit different of who you get. And I think at that time when I got there, the, the minor league system wasn't very good. So we weren't really, you know, you weren't infused with a lot of, you know, top flight players coming up after that. So we really had to build up that minor league system. And uh, I think they've done a great job doing that, by the way. I, I think that's part of, you know, going through periods of time like that is you do end up with some good draft picks. And I think they, they haven't missed on them. I know you've talked about finding a comfort level with the holidays at Oklahoma State. Do you harbor any aspirations of getting back into Major League Baseball? I, you know, I, I think at some point, but, you know, I, right now this is just really fun and, and I'm, I'm enjoying it. Uh, it. You know, again, it might not be at the Major League level, but I think it's, it's the, the impact that you're having with people that you're dealing with is, for me, this has just been a fun ride. I want to end this on a fun note. I hope you think this is fun because you're such a humble guy. You're such a chill guy that you had a moment in your career that to me seemed out of your personality. And that was when you charged the mound against Nolan Ryan. And I know you've been asked this probably a thousand times in your career. What compelled you to do that? And at what point did you say, all right, maybe I should have probably stayed in the box. <laughs> no, I, you know, at that time we kind of had some – you know, pitches go back and forth between the teams. And uh, I, I think I think they had hit a few guys and or we hit a few guys. And it, it was, if it was going to happen again, somebody's going to go. And I'm the one that ends up getting hit, not necessarily my personality, but, you know, I, I think at that time with what was going on, you just kind of got to go. Uh, and and I, I think you're halfway out there and you're thinking, oh, this is, this is probably not the best idea, but you still got to keep going. Robin, we really appreciate you giving us some time today. Thank you so much. All the best to you and your family. Please stay safe during all that we're enduring right now. All right. Thanks, Jack. You too.